Welcome to Real Chemistry, I'm Dr. Morris. Today we're gonna to be talking about nuclear chain reactions. This is a really important category of reactions because it's at the core of nuclear power, where you generate electricity from nuclear reactions, and also nuclear weapons, where you generate a large explosion from nuclear reactions. There's two important elements that undergo nuclear chain reactions, uranium-235 and plutonium-239. So we're gonna start by looking at uranium-235. So what goes on in a nuclear chain reaction? Well, the first step is that you send in what's called a neutron. So, right, that's just one of our subatomic particles, things that usually go in the nucleus. And if you shoot out a neutron towards a uranium-235 nucleus, something interesting happens. So this guy's a neutron, and we can symbolize our neutron like this in isotope notation. Remember that an isotope notation, this top number tells me the total things in the nucleus, which in this case, since it's just a neutron, is just one neutron, and the bottom number tells me the total number of protons. So we uh, sent in a neutron and it hit our uranium-235 nucleus. Now that uranium-235 becomes uranium-236. And it's easy to see why, because we've added a neutron to it. So if you add one more thing to the nucleus, then the top number up there goes up one. But that turns out to be an unstable nucleus. That's why it has these purple squiggly edges. It's saying this is not stable, it's not gonna stay around for long, and eventually it breaks apart. It breaks apart into krypton and barium. So that's a fission reaction, and you can see all of these yellow star marks here indicating that a bunch of energy is coming out. So that's a fission reaction but not yet a fission chain reaction. Importantly, what happens is three neutrons come out. So you put in one neutron and you got out three neutrons. Now here's the thing, those neutrons, when they exit that fission reaction, can go and start another fission reaction. Or they can just exit the material that you're running the, re that running the reaction in, or they can run into other nuclei besides uranium-235. But those neutrons having the potential to start another fission chain reaction is what allows for these nuclear chain reactions. So what are the options? Well, we have a neutron, like we saw in the first example, and it leads to a fission event. And here is our three neutrons that come out. One option is that it runs into uranium-238, which turns out to result in no fission reaction. That actually turns out to make plutonium, that's not really important for this video, but it doesn't result in a fission reaction. So the reason that's important is that if you go out into the world and you find a chunk of, of uranium, some of it is gonna be 235, and others are gonna be U238. And so if one of those neutrons runs into U238, the reaction stops. On the other hand, what could happen is that your nucleus could, or your neutron could just escape from the solid. And that's what's represented over here. Your neutron is just escaping from the solid and so it doesn't lead to another fission reaction. The last and most interesting option is that it runs into another U-235. So maybe this one splits off and hits another U-235 nuclei. And that will result in another fission reaction. And notice what happens. I had one chain reaction and it led to some neutrons, and now I release even more neutrons. And so each step of this reaction releases more and more and more neutrons. Now we can look at these reactions summarized. So here's what happens in our uranium fission reaction. 235 combines with a neutron, splits apart into krypton and barium, as well as three neutrons. Plutonium-239 can undergo the same process. You combine it with a neutron, and it will split apart into maybe xenon and zirconium, but actually what exactly that splits apart into varies. So sometimes it might split into that and other times different elements. The key here is that both of them start with one neutron, but kick out three. And that's what allows for a chain reaction. So one way to see how powerful this chain reaction is, because remember each time energy is being released, is to think about what happens as we get more and more and more of generations of this nuclear event. So here's a question we're gonna solve that'll help us get a picture of that. How many nuclear fission events occur in 20 generations if every neutron leads to another fission event? So here's the key here, is that if every single time you release a neutron, it leads to a fission event, then you actually double how many fission events you have every generation. So let's say that in your first generation, you have one fission event. 
And remember, you sent in one neutron, and two came out. And remember, you sent in one neutron, and three came out. So you've made a total of two more neutrons than you started with. And those two neutrons can go out and start and hit another set of uranium atoms. And if that happens in the second generation, you'll get two fission events. All right, it's not super exciting, but it keeps happening. You get four, eight, 16, and so forth. So what we're doing here is actually doubling each time. And so what that means is, if we take one, that's the number of events in the first generation, times two raised to the n, we'll get the number of fission events. And the nth generation. So what that's saying is plug in the generations here. So in this case we want to know what we get when we plug in 1 times 2 raised to the 20th power. When you do that you get out 1,048,576 fission events. That's for the 20th generation. So that is a lot of fission events. And what that shows you is that very quickly, if these things are doubling every time, and you have to set up the conditions correctly for this to happen, that you get a ton of energy that can be released all at once. And that's what can give us a nuclear bomb. If you set up the conditions slightly differently, you can actually just release a slow, steady amount of energy. And that's what happens in a nuclear power plant. So this is the power of nuclear chain reactions. In another video, which I'll link to below, we're actually gonna talk about how these chain reactions are used in nuclear weapons. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry.